Good morning and welcome to the Gathica Team Ministries service this last Sunday in April. The church doors may be shut but the church is open and we've got lots happening in our programme and service this morning. So this is what we've got to look forward to. We've got two new songs from Martin Fuller and myself. We've got some more family fun from Keeping Up With The Joneses. A year after the Virgin London Marathon we have a running blog. Martin Fuller is going to talk with us about his work with the food banks and with Micah. And we'll continue our series of the Bishop of Warrington Stations of the Cross. After being ill with the COVID-19 virus, Sam shares with us some of her reflections. We begin our morning with a song by Martin. Hi everyone, uh, I've got another song that I've written uh, to share with you. Um, Basically, this is called uh, You Reign, and it's just about how uh, God reigns in our lives and how uh, we make that choice as to whether we want that to happen. Um, as a Christian, you, you start off by, by making that choice as, as to whether you want to follow God. Um, and this is just a song about how he reigns and uh, how incredible he is. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Choices made, I have been saved because of your amazing grace. Lift your name high above because you reign, Lord, you reign. I was lost. Now I'm found You bore the cross And you wear a crown Now my debts They have been paid Cause you're alive And you reign Yes, Lord, you reign Life's been changed by your name. I feel your love from above. I worship you in all I do because you reign. Lord, you reign. I was lost. You wear a crown Now my debts They have been paid Cause you're alive And you reign Yes, Lord, you reign Lord, you reign Lord, rain. 
bore the cross and you wear a crown now my debts they have been paid cause you're alive and you reign cause I was lost but now I'm found you bore the cross some more family fun with Keeping Up with the Joneses. Here we go! Okay, ready? That was a good one. A year ago, the Virgin London Marathon took place and I had the privilege of running to try to raise money for the Children's Society. This year, the Virgin London Marathon event has been cancelled, as has many others, and trying to keep fit has become difficult. Here's a blog I made recently as I reflected on the Virgin London Marathon and as I look forward to the future in trying to keep fit and trying to keep healthy. This time last year, I was, it's the last couple of days before, the London Marathon and uh, never would have imagined that we'd had a lockdown like we've had and that uh, training would be so difficult and events this year will be called off but it is a beautiful morning here I'm out running towards Hale uh, coming out of Halewood and uh, it's just so beautiful and so glad to be out I'm doing this mostly because it's good for me and my mental health because it's keeping me fit and it's keeping me strong but it's also very tiring uh, as you can see the fields are full of blossom and it's just absolutely beautiful today what a glorious day we're going for an 8 mile run nothing like the 26 did last year but still so enjoyable where did this desire to run come from? I wasn't a natural sports person at school, but I was challenged in my early 20s by watching an 84-year-old complete the London Marathon. Also, I had the privilege of having a sister who was one of the organisers of the Mersey Marathon, so I signed up, much to the surprise of all my friends. I completed four marathons in the 1980s, never dreaming that 34 years later I'd have another go. Inspired by Elizabeth Morgan as she ran the 2018 Virgin London Marathon. Inspired by her, I joined with this running club and made some amazing friends. And lost a lot of weight. And here's just an example of the warm-up we do on an average Wednesday night. And it's the voice of Neil MacDonald you can hear in the background. In this current lockdown, I miss my friends at the Witness Running Club very much. And as you can see, it is great fun training with them on a Wednesday night. The right walk and wise down the track. That's it, going for height. High. Yeah. All this training got me fit, and last year I was able to run the London Marathon, and it was a privilege to do so for the Children's Society and to raise just over three and a half thousand pounds towards the incredible work which they do uh, with children in this country. It was hard work, but it was a great encouragement to see so many people I knew watching from the sides. Still, I was delighted to get to the end and I was thrilled to discover the BBC captured me crossing the line.
I was thrilled to complete my fifth marathon and I wouldn't have been able to have done it without the support of my friends and my coach Neil MacDonald amongst others and this year I was so much looking forward to the new challenge which was to run 100k over two days which is roughly 62 miles which would have taken place in June but sadly because of the coronavirus that's been cancelled. Still I've had the privilege of running with Sam as she's come to work with me and also the privilege of running with my friend Zoe who I would have run the event with. Now it's something I have to look forward to next year. Well here I am at the end of my eight mile run and I'm just approaching the church and I'm running across the field and you can see the blocks and dogs. It's absolutely beautiful. And the church is right in front of me. I must admit, I'm quite glad to be back. And I uh, just want to say thank you for journeying with me. Remember, whilst you're isolated, to keep fit, keep safe, and don't forget to keep praying, because God will get us through this. Now we'll have Martin Fuller sharing with us some of his thoughts on his work. Hi everyone and welcome to a week with the Micah Driver. So over the next few weeks we're going to be looking at my job role, what that entails from a Monday to a Friday. We're going to be following me around, collecting food and dropping it off for people who are in need. So I hope you enjoy the ride. So first thing in the morning, I drive to Aldi in Gattaca to collect some food uh, that they've left to one side for us. Aldi have been working with us for the past year now and it's been a huge help towards getting food out to those who need it. When the food is collected, I'll take it into the storeroom to be sorted out and this will be divided between uh, our two food banks which run on a Tuesday and a Thursday. So make sure you tune in to hear about them. Once I'm at the storeroom and I've uh, dropped all the food from Aldi off, I uh, then take the van and go and do my daily collections. Usually people phone into our office to pass information on of any food that needs collecting, any financial donations that need collecting as well. So I will, on the Monday, go and collect those things. We do have regular donations on a Monday which I go to every single week but we do have the one-off collection that I will collect as well so it all just depends on who phones in the week before or on that morning and uh, I will do my best to go and collect as, as much as I can uh, as well as the regulars. One of my regular collections on a Monday is from an organisation called Fersher. Fersher are a charity that take any surplus food from supermarkets uh, and then they divide that between the charities that are signed up with them uh, and this means that we can just add that little bit more to our parcels uh, whether it's fruit and veg or whether it's just nice snacks to, to go with what we've already got. Once I've done my collections for the day, I will sort through all of the food. The food gets sorted into different categories from sweet products like biscuits to uh, tinned fish, uh, some sauces or tinned tomatoes, uh, pasta, uh, dried goods such as noodles. And these are all the things that go into the food bank parcel that we give out to a person. 
So that's Monday over and done with. Hope you enjoyed following me around in the van. I uh, hope to see you next week for Tuesday. In the last few weeks, we've shown some of the segments from the Bishop of Warrington's Stations of the Cross. And here is a poignant one of the cross itself. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Three nails and a hammer. Licensed wickedness. A man is nailed to a tree. Three men are nailed. I hear their screams, but I do not see them. I see only you. I have walked this path with you and I shall stay with you, with the women, with your mother and with the disciple who dared to be seen. I will be seen. I will be ranked among your numbers. I have deserted you before. I will not desert you again. Where is love? Love hangs on a tree. This day, I covenant myself to you, and in this place, I will never leave you. I shall follow you all the days of my life. I will go where you go. Your people shall be my people. I will serve where you bid me serve. For me, you give your life. This day, my life is yours. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Many of you will know that Sam has suffered from the COVID-19 virus and has been quite poorly. Uh, on Easter Day, she managed to preach uh, from effectively her sickbed. Well, the good news is she's starting to improve and managed to get out for the first time since her infection started. And here's some of her reflections. So this is the first time in two weeks that I've been able to, to leave the house and, and, and go for a walk. And I've, I've come to one of my favourite parks um, in isolation, of course, to... Um, to just really get some fresh air and and it's been great to be able to do that and on, on this blog i, I kind of wanted to say two things really and the first the first one is is that i'm very thankful and grateful that i've i've recovered um this far and and, and i feel so much better and um you know I'm, I'm really grateful for for everyone who's really prayed for me and, and supported me during this time and a second reason is because I really want to to encourage everyone and one of the things that I want to I want to really talk about is the last seven months um, of me being in a place where I've been and and I guess the best way for me to do this is is to kind of start off by saying that I really wanted to kind of mark the occasion by um, by starting a new chapter and so it's very controversial. Um, but one of the things I did was I went and got a, a tattoo. Um, everyone's got their own views on that. I'm, I'm well aware. But um, I, I got my tattoo on my wrist because I wanted it to be an outward sign where people could um, could ask me about it and, and, and you know where it'll be a focal point. So before I go any further, I'm going to show you the tattoo, which I'm pretty sure once you see it, you're going to know where I'm going with this talk. So here it is. Okay, so just in case you didn't see it, or just to kind of um, capture what it says, it's a tattoo of a road with the words "Finish the race" going around it. And I guess when I got this tattoo, this was to mark to mark the journey that I was on, and you know, and and I didn't really cater into the fact that this would this virus would um, come up during this time. And I guess one of the things that I really want to talk about is that we're all on a journey right now. And um, one of the things that I really want to highlight is that no one journey is the same. But the struggles can often overlap. 
and um, I guess it's so important for us to not leave each other behind and it's important for us to support each other so again while we may not be together which I found really challenging and difficult nevertheless we are we are still connected in various ways and that journey can only be made more bearable more possible to know that we're not alone and so whatever journey you're on right now whatever road you're on whether it's an upwards an upwards hill or you're in a valley where you you can't really seem to get out of right now I just want to kind of encourage you all to to just take the steps you know it's not about who finishes first it's not about who's the fastest um something again I've struggled with but um but it's about finishing you know and, and and it's about getting to that finish line and that might not be tomorrow or next month but the finish line is in sight regardless of where of where you are right now and regardless of where we are collectively so i guess i guess right now as we go into another week with that little bit further along that road with that little bit further of our footsteps and with that little bit further of being back together again so take the encouragement, be together, and um, never leave each other behind. One of the things I've taken for granted at St Stephen's over the years is playing with such wonderful musicians as we have in church. And uh, when you want to write a new song that's full of praise, you immediately think of Patrick on the drums, uh, Martin uh, playing guitar, Simon on guitar, all the singers, Dan playing piano. But obviously, because of the lockdown, that's not been possible. And I wanted to share with you a praise song this morning called I Want to Praise You. Um, obviously, it's difficult to play a, such a song on my own. So I've put this together using uh, my eight track recorder. So I hope you'll bear with me um, as we as I go through this. But this is my offering to God this Sunday. And I'll be delighted if as you pick it up, you join in with me. Forever 
to cry aloud I want to scream and say You are good, 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 oh Lord You are good, you are good, you are good, you are good, you are good you are good, oh Lord. You are good, 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 oh Lord. You are good, 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 you are good. Oh Lord, you are good, 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 you are good. Oh Lord, you are good, 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 you are good. Oh Lord, you are good. And now we'll begin our simple service. Jonah and the Whale by Andrew McDonough. This is the great city of Nineveh. From a distance, it looks like a nice place to visit. But when you reach the front door, it doesn't seem quite so friendly. When you get inside and meet the locals, you might wish you'd never come. Here is the king of Nineveh with his how far can I throw visitors over the wall machine? His record is 352 cubits. Here are some ancient carvings from Nineveh. If you're on holiday, it's best not to visit Nineveh. This is Jonah, happy at home, a long way from Nineveh. One day, God sent a message to Jonah. Dear Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh and tell them, stop being nasty or else. Love from God. Jonah liked the idea of God being angry with the people of Nineveh, but he did not like the idea of warning them. They might start behaving and not get in trouble. Besides, he didn't want to help the king break his throwing visitors over the wall record. So Jonah hopped on a boat to Tarshish and sailed off into the sunset, away from Nineveh, away from God. God sent a huge storm with big black clouds and boat-breaking waves. Help! cried the captain. Save us! prayed the sailors. <sighs> snore, 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 went Jonah. Wake up, Jonah, yelled the captain, and pray to your God. Whose fault is this? asked the sailors as they began drawing straws. Mine, said Jonah, holding the short straw. I'm running away from God and I think he's just caught up with me. You'd better toss me in the sea. So the sailors grabbed Jonah by the arms and legs. One, two, three, splash! And the storm stopped. But God sent a whale to swallow Jonah. For three days and three nights, Jonah was inside the whale. It was too dark to read. Besides, he didn't have a book. He couldn't watch television because he didn't have a television. So Jonah prayed. Thanks God for saving me. I'll do what you ask. Then the whale swam up to the beach and bleh, out popped Jonah. God sent a message to Jonah a second time. Dear Jonah, did you have a nice trip? I hope you had a whale of a time. Now go to Nineveh and tell them, stop being nasty or else. Love from God. Jonah knocked on the front door of Nineveh. It opened and in he marched. 
Stop being nasty or else, yelled Jonah. God says, stop being nasty or else. When the king heard Jonah, he realised that while he enjoyed throwing visitors over the wall, it was not fun for the visitors. So the king stopped being nasty, put on his I'm sorry clothes and asked God to forgive him. Everyone in Nineveh did the same. Here are some more ancient carvings. But meanwhile, Jonah was furious. There wasn't going to be an or else. So he stormed out of Nineveh. Jonah sat outside the city and fumed. God grew a bush to shade Jonah. Jonah was happy about the bush. The next day, God sent a worm to munch on the bush. Jonah was angry at the worm. He was also angry at Nineveh and angry at God. Then God sent another message to Jonah. Dear Jonah, hot enough for you? You care about the bush that gave you shade. Well, I care about the people, the girls and boys and the animals in Nineveh. Shouldn't you? Lots of love, God. Wow. Our reading this morning is from John 21, verses 15 to 19. Jesus reinstates Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all these things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went out where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, I ask this morning that you'll speak to us, that we may learn more about your son Jesus and may learn to love him more as a consequence. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading we've just had spoke of an encounter that Peter had with Jesus on the shore of Lake Galilee. It comes after the fishing incident which we spoke about last week and uh, where we find that Jesus prepared a meal for them and showed them that he was risen in a true way. Now came that embarrassing moment where Peter and Jesus had to talk about the difficulties they'd had. The Bible never dodges difficult moments. And so Jesus takes Peter to one side, stands up to him and looks at him and says, do you love me? And Peter's upset by this because he does love him and he says, you know I love you. He said, do you love me? This happens three times. Now because Greek and English are not the same, we sometimes miss some of the nuances that are actually in this. And I know many of you will have heard this before, but what the exact words in Greek imply are these. Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, you know I'm your friend. Jesus says to Peter a second time, do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, you know I'm your friend. And then finally Jesus says, are you really my friend? And Peter says, Lord, you know me. You know everything about me. Of course I am. And this is the fundamental truth of the Christian faith. Is Jesus our friend? Because all of us let God down. All of us let each other down. All of us fail at times. All of us sometimes struggle to be more than we are. And yet somehow we always fall short. And yet through it all, God looks down at us and loves us and forgives us. We saw in one of those reflections on the cross from the Bishop of Warrington a few moments ago, Jesus being nailed on a cross, dying for you and me. 
and never mind whether we denied him or whether we've let him down or whether we've been weak, he looks at us and says, do you love me? And Peter, in this moment, was absolutely honest. And this is the challenge for all of us, to be absolutely honest with God. When Jesus said, do you love me? Peter didn't go, oh, of course I do, like he always did. No, of course, it's me, I love you, you know I love you. He just went, no, Lord. He said, I am your friend. And then Jesus said to him a second time, do you love me? Now I know if I was to do that in some of the relationships I'm in, if I was to speak to Jane and keep questioning her daily about whether she loves me, I would upset her. But in this instance, Jesus knew that Peter had let him down. But worst of all, Peter knew he'd let Jesus down by denying him. So in this moment, we have a, rest, a restitution, a, a, a repair of a relationship that's gone wrong. Do you love me? Said Jesus. And Peter for once tells the truth, acts completely, 100%. I'm your friend. He said, do you love me? And challenged the second time, Peter says, I'm your friend. And then Jesus says, are you my friend? And Peter says, you know I am your friend. On this Sunday after the resurrection, in our lockdown, in our fears, in our frustrations, in this moment, I believe Jesus looks at you wherever you are right now and says, do you love me? And you are expected to reply. So just for a moment, I want you to close your eyes as you're watching this program and ask you just to think of this moment as Jesus comes to you and says, do you love me? What is your reply? And if like me, you say, yes, Lord, I love you. He asks a second time, do you love me? And again, my reply is, yes, Lord, I love you. And then Jesus says for a third time, do you love me? And in all honesty, I have to say, God knows me inside out as he knows you inside out. And right now, God is longing to go into those deep places in our hearts and lives to bring us forgiveness, to bring us hope, to bring us resurrection, to bring us life, and to bring us into a closer relationship with him. It's in the honesty of this moment that we draw close to God. Elsewhere in John's Gospel, Jesus once said, true worshippers are those who worship in spirit and in truth. And right now, I'm going to say that what God wants from you is a true response. So if you're struggling today, say, Lord, I'm struggling. If you're feeling frustrated, say, Lord, I'm frustrated. If you're madly in love with Jesus, then just say today, I love you, Lord. But whatever your response, be honest, even if it is doubting, because God understands how we can doubt. And so today I urge you on this Sunday that we celebrate the resurrection by being honest with God and restoring our relationship, restoring our relationship with him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, pour your spirit upon us so that may, we may grow closer to your son Jesus. For we ask this in his name. Amen. Father God, this morning we want to pray for the children of our community. Those who are finding it difficult being in lockdown. The children who are finding it hard to study at home rather than being at school with their friends and their teachers. For the children that are finding it difficult not being able to go out and play with their friends. And for the children who just want to see their mates rather than just speaking to them on the phone or texting. Lord, in this time of restriction and lockdown, we pray that you will help the children to cope with the situation they find themselves in. Help them to be the best that they can be and help them to cope with all the restrictions around them. Lord, we pray that you'll keep them safe, that you will just help them to learn what they need to learn and that you will help them in all that they do to become the people that you've called them to be. Lord, we offer them all to you and their parents and siblings and just pray that you will just keep them safe in Jesus' name. Amen.
to God, please let the wind calm down, let the flowers grow up, let the sunlight be calm, and let all the family be nice and kind to the kids, and let all the butterflies go la 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 la, let the birds go tweet tweet tweet, let let everyone be not sick. Um. Father God, comfort and heal all those who suffer. Give courage to those who are afraid. Bring hope to those who have no hope. And bring joy to those who are sad. Amen. Father God, we want to pray for our key workers. We pray, Lord, that as they go out to work to keep our country running, Lord, that you will keep them safe. We pray for our NHS workers. We pray for our supermarket workers. We pray for our, pray for our delivery drivers and all those that are providing key services. Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for their service to us to keep this nation running. And Lord, we do just pray that you will keep them safe and keep them in your love. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.